everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Grid. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, and I'm here with Corey Barker. He's usually over doing some mad genius 3D stuff, but we have a special guest in the studio, Christina Shirk, and she is a phenomenal retoucher. And so today we're going to be talking about retouching and how it impacts uh, media. And also we're going to show you some tricks and some things that we're going to talk about retouching as far as a photographer, what you should do, whether you should do it, all those great kind of things. But that's kind of where we're going to go today. The we're topic actually going to do some retouching? We're going to do some retouching, too. So we're going to throw a little Photoshop Yay. in there as well, Sweet. in a little Lightroom. But so the, the topic today is retouching and its place in this world. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Christina, thank you so much for being here with us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Let the audience know who you are. Sure, absolutely. And I love the fin, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. It's for Shark Pixel. My name is Christina Shirk, and I am a professional retoucher based out of Washington, D.C. And my website is Shark Pixel, hence... Everything that comes out of D.C. I'm is sensing real. a theme here. Yeah, totally. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so check out sharkpixel.com if you want to see more about me. Yeah, we're mm. going gonna to go over to your website uh, in just a minute. But uh, before we do that, we kind of want to stir up the pot a little bit. You know, we're going to get edgy, uh, mm. relevant stuff today. Oh, look, Corey, there's your name right there. Hey, there I am. Yes. Check them out Thank at coreybarker.com. Because my, my gonna... name is very hard to spell. That's why I was waiting for that. So, all right. <laughs> but what we're going to talk about today is... It's become a hot topic about retouching, and, mm. and to be honest, I joked about it earlier, there's almost a moral sense of how dare you retouch nowadays. You, uh, retouchers have almost gotten a bad rap. There's, a, uh, there's an interesting philosophical there, stance about it. There's this whole it, yeah. philosophical thing. So mm. we're going to talk about that, hopefully dispel some ideas, and then we're going to show you some of the stuff that we're going to do. We've already got some great questions lined up. Make sure you go over to the chat if you've got any questions. We're going to be taking those along the way. We've got Brandon over there, Mr. Footman, taking care of all that stuff for us. So, uh, uh, But uh, first thing, I just want to jump out. I want to kind of chum the water a little bit. And, and this oh, is nice, Brandon. Like it? Ah, like it. <laughs> nice. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, hopefully a lot of y'all have seen this, where Cindy Crawford, if they pump, jump over to my my, my mm. uh, camera, computer, whatever this thing's called, uh, the whole big hoo-ha about Cindy Crawford sending out these pictures untouched of her were leaked, showing this is what the real woman looks like, and mm. this is where we should be looking at stuff, and, and, and it created shockwaves as this article goes on. And, and then you get over to things like... Uh, Photoshop and the media. I just did a couple quick uh, checks, and there, back in 2009, several European countries were looking to see if they could get laws put in there that it had to have a warning sticker when it was photoshopped. Mm. You know, let people know this advertising has been photoshopped, yada yada. There's been this sense of how dare we fake stuff. We all need to be very real. And then the, the other thing that I love, if you haven't been over there, it's yeah. just fun to, to watch. This is uh, go over to PSD. Well, it's actually psdisasters.com, and it talks about, and it shows all these great over-the-top Photoshop retouching stuff. Now, these are the people that should not be retouching. Yeah. These right are the here. people, yeah. and, and, and they're, this is where it goes too far, and this is where most people are thinking. As soon as you start talking about retouching, they go to stuff like this. They go to, well, look mm. at this woman here. If we jump back over it and look mm. at this woman, nobody is shaped like that. And, mm. and to be honest, Ralph Lauren got in trouble for, for this kind of stuff, but there's all kinds of stuff. And as retouchers, we kind of cringe, but we also know how this <laughs> could happen. Look at that. Mm. Like the guy with... Oh, the guy with the extra hand here. He's holding somebody's <laughs> hand here. Let's just say we all know. Where is the rest of them? We all know as retouchers we've accidentally left a, a mm. layer in there that we shouldn't have. Mm. But, yeah, you keep going on, and this is where they have the extra twin over the shoulder of Brad mm. Pitt. You know, there's just – this stuff is fun to look at, but then it's just like, holy cow, what were they thinking? And this is where a lot of people are taking the whole idea of Photoshop is evil. Yeah, there's no way that's physically possible. There's stuff going on there that should well, it, never be. Hey, it, always, I don't it really stresses the point that you know, as, as retouchers, when you're working, of course, you, you you get concentrated on a particular part. You can get kind of tunnel vision and lose detail everywhere else. You need that second pair of eyes before you send something out. It says, hey, how does this look to you? And obviously, these people just kind of went, yeah, it looks fine to me. But even a normal person, I mean, just look at that and go. <laughs> Why? This is the exact reason why I never send anything that I've been retouching late at night after I've been working on it all day yes, out sleep on it. Yeah. that mm. night. Mm. I Because <laughs> you wake up the next morning and you go, what was I thinking? You know, mm. this is way too overdone. I need to pull this back sure. completely. Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself that time 
just not looking at the image because you do you get tunnel vision you get mm. drawn into these things especially when you're retouching something for like five six hours sure. zoom in to 100 200 percent totally you're, yeah. you're working on this one area you forget this other so what are your thoughts with all this kind of backlash to photoshop and retouching and we've even got we've got a guy up here says i i often emotion music said i often get the statement that retouching is cheating but I don't think it is. What is your guys' thoughts? And that's kind of where we wanted to jump off here. Yeah. What are your thoughts about it? So um, what's really interesting about this whole conversation is that I think um, people, I, I try to relate retouching in photographs to special effects in movies. And the reason why I say that is because there is news footage, which is video, mm -hmm. and there are movies and big cinema which is also video, but if there were all of a sudden a law that outlawed using special effects in video, I think we'd we'd hear an outpouring of 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 issues. Every, uh, yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. would say, yeah. "Excuse me, no, we want we want our entertainment." Mm. So I think that this is going to be an issue that you run into with any form of art that can also be used as journalism, mm -hmm. right? So photography is also another form of journalism. We've got photojournalism, yep. but we've also got photography as an art form. And so while everyone knows, I live in Washington D.C. <laughs> I am, I'm kind of a, you know, I can tell you what's allowed and what's not allowed mm -hmm. in terms of photo J and uh, toning and dodging and burning and mm -hmm. those types of images. But I think as long as photography has a step or has, you know, is renting an apartment within the art um, realm that you need to be able to retouch. Now, if I, you know, had to look into my crystal ball and think, you know, what is going to happen with this backlash? I think it's fantastic that, that there are unretouched images going out there because instead of having a backlash on retouching in general, it, the act of retouching, what I think needs to happen is it needs to turn into a conversation about educating people. Mm. So especially educating young girls and saying, this is not this is not photojournalism. This is not straight out of the camera. This is not used for documentary purposes. Mm. This is advertising, okay? You know, you've got those milk ads where the kid's running and then all of a sudden he's got like wings of milk. Mm. People know that that's not real, right. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? So the same with advertising photographs. Let's talk about it. If there has to be some kind of uh, sticker or emblem on the images that says this image has been retouched, mm -hmm. I actually think that would benefit the retouchers out there because as it stands right now, and this is a whole nother topic <laughs> that we should have on another episode of The Grid, but retouchers live in the shadows. They mm -hmm. don't get the credit they deserve. And I can tell you this being both a photographer and a retoucher is a lot of times when I do retouching for, for a lot of photographers, my name is not listed. The mm. model's name is listed, the makeup artist's, artist's name mm. is listed, and so in my well, waiver, it says if, if you're gonna be, give credit to everybody else, you need to include mm. the credit mm. of the retoucher. Well, I think you make an interesting parallel to feature films and television is that you know the best, they always say the best visual effects artists are the ones whose work is invisible. Yes. When you look at the scene and you see something happen and you think that's real and you believe it, then their work, their job is to when it is way obvious, it's like oh my, you somebody know, you, screwed you, you've up. You've seen that, bad movies or bad visual effects, and you go like that's the fakest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. The same thing goes with static images, I think. But mm -hmm. I think also we want to entertain the fantasy, as viewers as well as artists, we want to entertain the fantasy. We want to take it a little bit beyond reality and create and, captivating images and create a captivating image. If I've got an idea in my mind and reality can't quite produce that for me, and I need to take it that extra low, I don't think that's cheating. Because I know what I want, and I'm getting, and it's getting me there. So it really depends on the end product and where it's going. I think. So. Well, and the big question is, who's setting the rules? Why? Who says what's cheating? Uh, we've got so many different people deciding what the rules are and saying, well, that's cheating. Mm. Well, what are you basing that on? Yeah. yeah. And, and the big question comes down to, I think there are specific guidelines to photojournalism where you you have to represent it as real as it happened right there. Mm. But then everything else falls into the art category. I'm not a photojournalist, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is to create the best image I can. And to that end, I will retouch if I need to, to do whatever I want. However, I will not do that if I'm shooting for a newspaper or a photojournalist, whatever. But here, even then, you can manipulate that a little bit. Your lighting, all mm -hmm. these other things, there are things you can do to, to, to sway that around. Mm -hmm. So 
we tend to get in this purity argument, especially if you never mess with Photoshop or whatever. You go, oh, that's that's of the devil. Yeah. And, and the best photography is one that you never touch that stuff. Well, that's being a little pedantic and a little bit, I'm holding on to my little corner here, mm. and it's not allowing for the artistic expression for people to do what, what they want to do. And so... Um, I, I, think, th I think another thing is, is, is I've seen a lot of people do really bad retouch jobs, and it's only to save a bad photo. You know, you need to start with a good shot. I mean, you really, I mean, if people just go way overboard, it says this is a horrible shot, and they just take it way overboard, and then you've got something way worse than you ever started with. I think maybe yeah. that's part of the reason why retouchers maybe get a bad name, because mm -hmm. the good retouching that's out there, mm -hmm. you don't know you that it's been retouched. It. You never right. even know it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's, I, mean, so, I mean, I always say this, even when I'm doing, you know, retouching or even the makeup stuff I do, is subtlety is key. You know, you, once you realize that it's a retouch, you've done, you've gone too far. Right. Back it up. Right. You know, so it's 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 really it's really a subjective thing. I think. Hey, so. let's take a couple a couple more questions here. It says, um, retouching is great as long as it does not distort the truth or create a fantasy, unless it is known to be a fantasy. Or if that fantasy is the end goal. And you know, it's you know, what what I say. Even when I'm doing just teaching a photography class about composition or whatever, the whole question comes down to what are you trying to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and that will lead you to decide whether or not to retouch or not retouch. What's the end product that you're going after? Yeah. If I'm going for something, I'm just going for beauty, I'll retouch it all day long. If I'm going for journalistic whatever, I'm not. Uh, somebody said, retouching isn't cheating, it's a means to an end. Uh, and then Frank Dorhoff says he never takes more than five minutes for a retouch. Composition's excluded, of course. What's your opinion about that? Well, here's the thing. I'd be inclined to agree with at some level. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we love Frank. And... And what happens is people in this, in, in photography and all this, love to grab on to these little rules. And one person will say something, and that becomes their mantra for life. Uh, first of all, Frank is a phenomenal shooter, so he's already done so much of the legwork that there isn't a lot of, of retouching that he needs to do. But also, he's developed a style and stuff for him. I would, I used to teach tennis. And you would get one person out there that could just naturally pick up a racket and hit like crazy. I would teach them completely different than that person that just didn't quite have the same skills. They would take longer. They'd have to work on other things. N you can't just teach the same thing to every person, just like you can't apply a rule across the board. There's some people that really get into it and will take hours retouching, and mm -hmm. others will mm -hmm. take five minutes. Which one's better? It's it's up to the person and the product. Yeah, and I, and I also think that your knowledge of Photoshop is going to help you stick within those you know rules mm -hmm. or guides that you that you give for yourself. Sure. So if I look at my image here that I have um, of a girl, what I've done is there is a free action on my website. I'm, just, I'm gonna bring this up again. Here comes She's the blog. It. She's <laughs> it. Um, for you to download, and if I go ahead and click on this action, it does it ostensibly is creating basically an outline for your retouching. Um, so this is great. I have been there many a time where you do, you, you get tunnel vision, you end mm -hmm. up in, you know, in this image and you've been working on it for three hours and you look at the clock immediately and you're like, where did that go? Mm -hmm. Like where, where did my time just go? Yeah. So creating an outline for yourself by using things like actions and by increasing your knowledge of Photoshop so that you can use it to its best or to its highest power to mm. facilitate your work. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Um, you, you so can so hold on, that. I'm, I'm going to jump in here for a second because you just you hit one button and all this stuff happened on the side here. So now you've got all these different. You've created mass in all these different sections for where you can exactly. start to play in here. So what I did was the frequency separation, all of the frequency separation is already done for you. And it's also already hidden behind a black and white mask. The mask has been generated using um, select color tones, skin tones for that, for that reason. So right off the bat, you click one button and your skin smoothing is already done. Now, any additional blemishes that you need to get rid of, and if this is too strong, of course, you just pull down the Drop opacity. Drop down the opacity. Okay, you know, you've got your layer for blemishes, you've got your eye whites, you've got your eye color, um, and each one is just holding inside it different things, like a sharpen layer and a color change layer and everything like that. So depending on what your model has, you're just gonna be painting with white over all of these black masks. And then this creates the outline for you so that when you do get up to the, to the end folder, the lips, you know the image is done. 
let's move on. And so this really creates structure in an otherwise unstructured mm -hmm. um, area. Us being creatives, it's very yep. hard, very easy to get sidetracked and oh, ADD absolutely. and mm -hmm. yeah, everything like that. So well, and that kind of goes along with the question here that says, could you say that there's a specific way to approach the retouching process in different genres? I think you need to know what each genre is expecting. Like if you're doing you you would retouch a fashion beauty image a lot different than a family image. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's different expectations for it. You've got to know what your market is and what is going to be accepted. The end result is you're doing this for a client. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what the client wants. So you're doing a wedding shoot, uh, an engagement shoot or whatever, that bride wants to look her absolute best. So you're going to take more time to fix her up than you would, say, a, a lifestyle family shoot where they're out playing in the yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the genres definitely do have an impact on, on what you're doing there. For people that, uh, that aren't necessarily super Photoshop savvy, that may have scared you a little bit. Uh, but the good news is it, it's actually pretty easy once you get in there and start playing with it. So I would recommend going and checking it out, downloading it, and playing right. with it. You can just go to each one. All that was written by that action. So I mean, Yeah, it was just, really you just great, hit the button. You know, She's hmm. already programmed that in. If you don't know what actions are in Photoshop, it's in essence for the folks that were my age and, and older, uh, it's just like a tape recorder. It records everything that you've done and, and records it, and you hit stop at the end and now every time you want to do that again in Photoshop you just hit play and it plays it all there for you. Um, she, she mentioned something called frequency separation and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, we're going to need to take a little break and kind of get get back onto it. But I actually have, for those of you that want to know a little bit more about frequency separation, if you go to our Photoshop user TV episode 368, you can just Google that. Uh, I talk about it about halfway through. And to be honest, it's it's a great term that people who who love terms love it because it feels like they're, they've got a little it's extra fancy knowledge. Talk. It's fancy, fancy talk, tech talk for you just doing tones on one layer and details on another. So anyway, that's uh, Photoshop User TV episode 368. But let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We'll gather back. We'll talk about this some more. And we're going to show you some stuff that we like to do when we're retouching images. And we're going to retouch some images that people have submitted. There we have it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Scott Kelby here, and I want to invite you to a very special celebration. As you may know, Adobe's flagship program, Photoshop, turns 25 years old this year. And to celebrate RC, me, and the Photoshop guys, we're hosting a webinar where we'll be showing you the top 25 things you need to know, some hidden secrets in Photoshop, and some of the coolest things that have been added over these years. Now, please come and join us March 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for a whole lot of fun as we celebrate Adobe Photoshop's 25th anniversary. We'll see you there. Get the world's best photography, lighting, and Photoshop training at Photoshop World. It's three nonstop days of real world training where you can get personal attention and unlimited access to the world's top instructors in Photoshop and photography. When you attend, you'll have chances to experience hands-on live shoots and workshops. This is the must attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Sign up today, Photoshop World, the world's best Photoshop and photography conference. All right, well, we're back, and uh, so we, we had her take her shark fin off, so I thought, you know, I'd had to We have to keep the shark that. theme yeah. at some level. The shark theme. I look pretty good in that. I look hot. I'm going to wear this. I'm stealing this. Mm -hmm. My kids would love that, by the way. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, we always have great discussion when we, we take a break, uh, and we were talking about how it, you really have to know, as a retoucher, you got to tread carefully, don't you? Um, it's It's... It, it's funny. It's, it, people are increasingly more sensitive about it nowadays. It seems like it was no big deal, you know, years ago. But it just seems like pe I guess as people as technology has gotten more prevalent and people are, have more access to these kind of tools more than, than professionals have. People, but there are people that seem to have just want to complain for the sake of complaining. That's my issue. Is you know because you get Scrooges. Yes. You know. So you're gonna get. You're gonna. It's really a matter of. You know. I, I mean. Actually, I'm. I've worked with makeup artists, you know, when you, you see them on these photo shoots and their, and their mothers are there, you know, it's, and you see mothers with these young models and, you know, they're very, very protective about their, their images of their, of their young ones. But it's not so much, 
the shoot aspect of it. It's the post aspect. You know that if that mother really wants to pay attention to what's going on, watch the retoucher. And they never really do, you know. But I think it's the re- I think it's a responsibility for the retoucher at some level. But again, what we're talking about, you know, it's whether or not you're pursuing art or reality, you know. Well, and let's face it. Okay, here here's a, a case in point. Um, headshots. We had Peter Hurley come in sure. here and he mm-hmm. did our headshots. Yeah. As soon as we got our headshots, what did you do with yours? I posted them online. On, on, did you retouch anything? I did not retouch them at all. <laughs> oh, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, mine was perfect right yeah. out of the gate. No, actually, I did a little bit of an exposure adjustment, but as far as any, you know, no, tweaking or anything uh, like that, I didn't, tightening no, up. No, I, I didn't. Listen. I didn't fix n- the fat chin or anything like that. You know, listen, so. if you got the power and you got the notion, mm-hmm. I second that emotion. Yeah, okay. Um, no, but that's. We're. It's an interesting time in our world. Because of social media, there really is kind of a, a push to editing ourselves. Mm-hmm. How dare we put out something that's, that's really real in some ways. That's not what people want. That's a, there's a whole other philosophical thing. I've got a great uh, link if you ever want to go to a wonderful discussion about social media. Uh, uh, there's a, a Vimeo uh, a Vimeo video out there called The Innovation of Loneliness, and it talks about the role of social media in our lives. It's a beautiful thing, but it talks about how nowadays we don't have true relationships. We have edited relationships. That's part of the problem. Everything we're doing is editing. Mm. As soon as I get a picture of myself, if somebody else has taken it, I'm going in and, and, and retouching it too because I don't want you to see this. I don't want to see my yellow teeth. I don't want you to see the belly. You know, we're, we're very conscious about that. So there's, there's both this negative and this plea for yeah. don't you dare put out anything that hasn't been retouched. Yeah, I mean, well, I... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, have you seen... There was a story recently at Kim Kardashian, of course. We're talking about her again. Um, it's got a retoucher on retainer for like a hundred grand who retouches all her social media pics. Oh, that's so, not, yeah, so that's no, not surprising. Nothing for her is just impromptu. She actually sends it to this guy. He touch, he touches it up and then it goes out. So, you know, I, I don't, I, I seem to have an issue with that. You know, she's going to put herself out there for real. Then yeah, be, but be here, real. here's the thing. This is the debate we could get into. Yeah. Here's the thing. That's a, a public figure and a part of her public figure. <laughs> or yeah. as a retoucher, if somebody comes to me and says, I'll pay you $100,000. Yeah. I know, right? I was going to be like, somebody, like um, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. But, but here's the truth. <laughs> TV, social media, uh, entertainment is a fantasy. It, a lot of it is sure. a fantasy. Yeah. I, I, we were talking about this earlier. I really wanted to play a clip of the old, uh, the original Batman movie with... Uh, uh, Keaton? Michael the Keaton. old Michael Keaton, yes, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, where they had to have, uh, you know, the different cosmetic things were coming together, killing people. So then they had all the uh, news, the anchors, news anchors yeah. or whatever not having makeup on, and how terrible it was. Mm. And, and then we think about now when the HD TVs came out, yep. all of a sudden they said, "Man, <laughs> some of those anchors and stuff, I, I, I can see too much of that. I, let's yeah. uh, let's pull that back, or let's give them some more makeup." No, hey, now they do like a like a, a filter, soft filter or a whatever, soft filter because, of her skin tone. because let's let's well, they're getting face wider it. shots. We <laughs> forget that we don't actually spend our time doing this to another person. Mm. Imagine if you talk like this. I hope my breath doesn't stink, but imagine. <laughs> That's what's happening with a lot of the pictures. We're looking at them this close, mm-hmm. and we don't see each other that way. We see each other from a distance. So I'm not like, oh man, look at the, look at that. Yeah, look at that wrinkle. Yeah. Part of it is the retouching is just to get us back to a normalcy that most people see because of the heightened ability to get the detail, the sharpness, all that stuff. Especially with the with the uh, raw image sizes nowadays, the medium format stuff. You, you can mm-hmm. look at the pores of people. How many times have you paid attention to the pores of a person that you've been having a conversation with? Yeah. yeah. And so there, there's that side of it as well. We Shoot, right before we sat down here, what was the first thing that happened? Arnaldo, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of interesting, Arnaldo brings over the makeup and he starts putting the makeup on us. It mm-hmm. was a very touching moment and Arnaldo and I shared a great time together. Shed a tear. But let's face it, you don't want to see this face without makeup on. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's things that we say we want reality, but the truth of the matter is we, we prefer beauty over reality a lot of the time. And so there's this, there's this hypocrisy that goes on that yeah. we we want to argue about it in certain areas and, and accept it wholeheartedly in other areas. Well, look at the context we're in. Like when you're out in reality in regular daylight, that's one thing. But we're under concentrated stage lighting here. It's going to emphasize features on us that are, you know, may or may not want to emphasize. And that's what makeup does. It's like you're not doing it to be a beauty queen. You're just doing it because 
the way the the light's going to hit you on the set and how the, the camera's going to pick that up. Unl so. Unless, I do a lot of headshots too in Washington, D.C., and unless a client specifically asks me for something to do in terms mm. of the retouching, what I the, the mantra that I try and live by is if I can do it, if it can be done with makeup, then I can do it in retouching. If it cannot be done with mm. makeup, I won't do it necessarily in mm. retouching for my corporate clients, for, not for mm. the advertising, retouching, yeah. right. big jobs, you know, where I'm in at 400%, but for, you know, your regular client, mm. your regular photography client, that's a good rule of thumb. And, um, you know, I think it just gives you, I mean, I call, I call retouching digital makeup all the time. You yeah. have a course on yeah. adding mm -hmm. makeup, digital right. makeup. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good way, uh, or like a tipping point on if you do want to learn how to retouch and retouch well, mm -hmm. but not take it too far, stay away, from, you know, stay away from liquify. Yeah. You know, just do things that could be potentially right. done on I mean, the face. I mean, one rule of thumb I use is like, I, I won't do anything in Photoshop that can't be done in reality. Yeah. You know, that person sitting there and you're doing actual makeup. A you know, belt sander will do awesome on Oh, yeah, hips. fantastic. You know, but like she said, on your skin. <laughs> when you go to the extremes of liquify, and you have to, there's that little moment when you're retouching and you have to decide. Like, I was retouching an image uh, just uh, a couple weeks ago, and there was a small mole on the person's face. Now, that is part of that person. That is who they are. Do I take that out? You know, if somebody specifically asked me to take that out, then I will. But if I'm just sitting there and I'm deciding on my own, I'll, I'll typically leave it. Or I'll understate it a little bit. Sometimes right. I'll put makeup on to understate certain features. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Still leave it there. Diminish but, the But effect. diminish that. The, the, right, because you eliminate change it entirely. Them. You change them. Chances are, if you make that call on your own, that person is going to to come back to you and say, why'd you take that out? Yeah. You know, you know, why'd you or they're not going to even talk to you at all, and right. they're going to be offended, and mm -hmm. they might not come back to you sure. as a photographer. Right. Uh, another thing that I think is really interesting is, if you guys remember The Matrix, there's this scene in The Matrix where you know he's just kind of become self-aware of the fact that there is no world or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Were you just matrixing? I was matrixing to the charge. Oh, he's doing the bullet. <laughs> and so he's talking to, uh, what's the guy's name? Morpheus Mr. Anderson. Morpheus with mm. the, with the su sunglasses. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, well, how do I look like this? Like, how do I actually exist mm -hmm. in this form if I know now that I... It's residual self-image. It's a residual self-image. Mm -hmm. And what I think is so interesting... Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you're doing it. Oh, he's the encyclopedia of movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and what I think is really interesting is that if whenever you take a portrait of somebody and they look at it, nine times out of ten, they're probably looking at it going, oh, my God, I look awful. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing against you. Don't worry, photographer. You know, it's nothing against you. It's me. I just look terrible. I'm mm -hmm. sleepy and everything like that. So it's this. People are more self-critical than you realize. Exactly. Well, yeah. And mm -hmm. so doing that retouching is just bringing you back, like you said a little bit a few minutes ago, bringing you back to your baseline. Well, they also carry the residual is usually a negative connotation. They don't like having the picture taken. They don't like this. Part of your job as a retoucher and a photographer is to make them look better than they think they do. Yes. Well, and it's, well, the point is they, there's a version of how they think they look. And then, and there's, then there's how they, how they actually look. Right. Mm -hmm. And those are often in conflict. Right. You know, when they see an image of themselves, it's like, that's not me. It's like, yeah, it is. It's just like you, even when I see a picture of myself, I don't know, I'm like, I, I just don't think I look that way. Oh, I'm way skinnier in real life. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> hey, speaking but. of, let's jump over to your website because I, I want to I wanna show you off a little bit and, and let them see uh, some stuff that you're doing. And, and here's the thing, because she knows what she does, she's got different categories over here that, you know, advertising, beauty, corporate, family. I guarantee you that you're retouching differently for each one of those. Yes. Right? And so this, I was just going to, you know, you can walk through here, just but I love this. the beauty you, ones. Yeah, I was going to stick with the beauty. But she has on her site where you can scroll over, see the before and after. So this is the after, and that's the before. And I think that this is part, probably the one thing that needs to happen. I think retouchers should band together and start whenever possible writing into their contracts that I am going to show the before mm -hmm. because it's an education. It's, a, it's an issue of education. The more and more we educate people on the fact that retouching is an art form, we are not going to end up with the backlash that we have today. Michael Corsentino shot that image it's incredible and that's a medium format image and look mm. at the detail right you would never look at her like plus the lighting the, you know 
The lighting does here. great job to sculpt her and create this drama, but it also brings out more detail to her skin that has some, some texture issues to it. So you're just bringing it back to, because I guarantee you, most people when they see her, see her more as the, the figure on the left now than that right there because of the lighting and the stuff going on. Exactly, just adding, a, softening that light source just a bit. Well, it's almost you think about it. If you think about, you know, Centuries ago, when, people, when painting was the only form of photography, in a sense, when people would, but people, you never, they never painted every little mm -mm. subtle detail in there. It was always about, you know, and that's because that was art. It was representing, but now you're using actual photos of people, and I think that's where the line is: is that you know you're using a photograph of someone versus you're actually drawing someone. Nobody ever complains about you know the skin's too smooth on that painting of that woman or anything like oh, that. Oh yeah. You know? Everyone right. looks at the Mona Lisa and says, oh, that's too perfect. It's a painting, but. When it's a photograph and you take it into that artistic realm, that's when people get a little, I think they get a little confused as to, you know, what is art and what is reality. Totally. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep doing this. Uh, why don't you read, oh, uh, we've got a question from Brandon. He says, what about not only, what about the way not only young girls view themselves, but how young boys make the relationship between retouched images and reality? Women can never live up to those standards, Brandon. Yeah. Very good, Brandon. Lovely question. Very. Yeah. I think it's, I think all the more reason to go back to that education, right? Mm -hmm. And so young, young men as well should be also seeing what retouching can do. I mean, I mean, what we have to accept is that this, this, we're a visual society. Retouching in its, in, as an art form or whatever you want to call it is not going to go away. It's only going to get more so. So I think you're right. Education is key in making people understand that this this is an art form. It's not it's not reality. I mean it's. I mean, let's it, quickly go back to the um, the issue or the like a hypothetical situation mm -hmm. of movies and special effects. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got a young kid who's playing Superman and he runs off the roof of his barn mm -hmm. and he starts flying, and all of a sudden some kid sees that in a movie, goes home and runs off his roof right. expecting to fly. Yeah. I mean. That's worst case scenario, mm -hmm. but that's what is kind of it, happening with retouching. You know, it's mm. unrealistic expectations. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think that that the the special effects company that created that flying um, kid mm. would be anywhere liable or responsible or responsible yeah. that a kid. It's all about education. It's all about seeing a kid run off a roof and start flying and it's up to the parents to say look at this website you know if i've got young girls or young boys let's have this talk yeah. let's talk about let's go on and let's look at the before and afters let's see that no one is perfect and that's why i'm going back we're all talking about movies again <laughs> um but that's why i've always liked watching like behind the scenes type things or you know how this was made and everything like that because it really shows you you know this this the, the fantasy is not real. You know, and it, it makes me think when I was a kid watching movies, I mean, I've loved movies since I was, you know, like two or three years old. And every time I would, something would happen in a movie, I'd be like, my God, I'm like, Dad, did that really happen? He's like, no, son, it's a movie. He almost would be mad, but every time his, his answer was the same no, son, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. And then it took a while and it finally sank in. I was just like, what I'm seeing on the screen isn't real. It, it's entertaining me. It's, it's fantasy. It's, it's, it, but it's sad we have to lose that. It's hey? sad we have to lose that, yes, indeed. But at the same time, you know, because I got into this, it's one of the reasons I got into this is because I wanted to become part of creating that fantasy. Yeah. You know, there were things I saw in my head I wanted to get out there. And Photoshop, I mean, I went to art school. I went to, to Ringling School of Art and Design, and I worked in traditional media. I did drawing and painting and all these things. Never found, you know, what I really wanted to do until I discovered Photoshop. My fourth year was my fourth year at Ringling and found Photoshop, and it opened up a whole different world to me. Yeah. I didn't want to lie to the world, but it allowed me to take images and things and create things that weren't real, weren't yeah. really there. That's what drove me on that. And I think that's what drives a lot of retouchers and such like that. But as their as their work gets more and more, you know, and then you've got the bad retouchers out there that yeah. get in the mix and then it, it it really makes us legitimate retouchers struggle in a sense. And like getting our product out there and getting it believable, but it's 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 a it's an interesting world. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I enjoy it. So well, and ideally yeah. everything would be real, would be awesome, and we wouldn't have to fake stuff. Mm -hmm. But this world is where it's at, and we do we have to live with this sense of you know reality fantasy. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we, we all, you know, obviously this was a baited question. We believe, we love photo retouching. And let's do this. Let's, uh, let's take another quick break, but when we come back, we're going to grab some of the, uh, we had some people send in a couple images that they'd like us to play with and retouch, yes. and, and we're going to play with those when we get back. So we'll be right back in just a moment. Pen's getting itchy here. <laughs> active lava, just the pure intensity of it, the incredible birth of the earth. The volcano had several elements as a photographer that fascinated me, the light and the movement, just the raw power of it. To me as a photographer, it's, it's as good as it gets. All right, we're back. I probably shouldn't clap right into the microphone, sorry about that, but uh... <laughs> Uh, yes, Pete is not real. He is a product of Corey Barker's 3D Photoshop experiment on a dark and stormy night. Boy, if he created me, he's got major issues. That means I was really bored. Um, all right, we're going to jump back in, and we're going uh, to let y'all play around with some of the images that people have sent in and, and walk through some of the, the retouching that y'all will do uh, because... We have a bunch of photographers out there, but as photographers, we're gonna wanna know how to retouch some stuff because mm -hmm. that's part of our value-added packaging. The, unless you're selling yourself as just a straightforward photographer, you're gonna need to do some retouching, uh, especially uh, you know unless you're shooting supermodels that have no problems whatsoever, but even those, that's not real. So, uh, all right, let's jump in. And the first one uh, that we're going to work on is this one. And I'm looking up who sent that one in. That's going to oh, be Cian. Is that an L? Cian Elizabeth Robertson uh, sent this one in and said, uh, I never know how to make my images look magazine glossy. It always seems like there's something missing. This is a JPEG straight from the camera. And so we're going to jump over to, to Christy's computer. And uh, go ahead. Make it fabulous. Yeah, well, you know, I did, I'm sorry I didn't have that much time to work on it, but, um, but what I, you know, it's really interesting, uh, um, that relationship between the photographer and the retoucher, if they're not the same person, mm -hmm. to see how even the retoucher um, kind of, like what they draw from your comments on your image of what you need done. So glossy, I mean, it, it's such a relative word, right? How do I make my images look more glossy? Well, that could mean a lot of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, Corey and I were talking that we, we took both completely different paths mm -hmm. with this image, yeah. mm -hmm. which as two different retouchers, I think is really excellent and really, really cool to uh, consider as well. So for me, um, what I did for this image was I didn't have enough time, like I said, so I'm only going to do, I only did half the face, but if I hold down my option key and I click on and off of my dodge and burn layers, you should be able to see the difference of my before and after. And so this is just the, uh, dodge and burn skin technique. And I didn't do anything. I didn't smooth the skin at all. I know this is a JPEG and it's kind of starting to get a little bit, um, crunchy. Yeah. But, uh, but if I s um, zoom in, you can see just the before and after of a little bit of that shaping, which it can all be done with makeup, which can mm -hmm. all be done with contouring, sure. mm -hmm. um, even doing makeup. I, I didn't even smooth the skin. I, I didn't use frequency separation here. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, we're very, this comes, this little segment comes from an upcoming, <laughs> uh, an upcoming class that I'm going to have with Kelby. Um, all about skin retouching only on kelby1.com. Mm. So tune in for that. It should be coming out soon. That's kelby1.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't know we were supposed to prepare side effects. Yeah. No, I got it. No, sound, I got sound it. effects. No, he's got that covered. Yeah. I got oh, that covered. Sorry, Freudian yeah. slip. Side yeah. effects. Side sound effects. effects. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, 
What was I talking so about? So you were talking about the dodge and burn. Or you were you're playing that. Uh, can you can you show real quick your thoughts about dodging and burning, or just a, a little tip about dodging and burning? Yes, that is what exactly where I was going. <laughs> is, thank you, memory. Um, that's exactly what I was talking about. Is we're very lucky as photographers and as retouchers that we we almost get like a cheat, right? Our uh, our form of art is two-dimensional. You know, you've got your x-axis and your y-axis. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Is it x and y or is it x and y? X yes. I don't know. I'm dyslexic. But we don't have to deal with the z-axis. We don't have to deal with the three-dimension axis in when our piece of paper or when our yet, photograph. Anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shh, you're the 3D person. <laughs> We're not talking about that, <laughs> no. Um, but what's nice is that you can create the if, the uh, illusion of dodge or of three dimension on a two dimensional, um, you know, on mm -hmm. a two dimensional piece of paper or or photograph mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and really use that to your advantage to tweak the image and really make it look like it's. Uh, like bouncing out from your image. You're able to supply depth just based on lightness and darkness. Y yes, exactly. I should just have him come with me everywhere. Well, I was gonna, yeah. It's, lightness it's, comes it's, forward, darkness based recedes. Based on how the, the human eye sees and how it perceives depth, yeah, exactly. You can manipulate that. That's what we're, we're, we're basically illusionists. Yes. I mean, that's what we do, you know, so. Thank you, David yeah. Copperfield. Oh, thank you. Now he's going to disappear. Yes. In a cloud of smoke. So, so that's why dodging and burning has such a, a, a powerful influence on your image because you're now highlighting, you're bringing things forward, you're taking the jawline, you're moving it back or forward, and the. But the, no the, liquefy. Yeah, you're not liquefying. You're just, and this is the same thing that you're doing with makeup, uh, in essence, because that's what a, a good makeup artist does. It accentuates areas. The bone structure, if you look on her screen, the bone structure hasn't changed. You haven't manipulated her face. You've just manipulated the lighting of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a great question about yep. that, too. But, I, but first, why don't you show us what you did as well on that same image and how you interpreted the question. All right. So I took the, the very same image here, as you can see right there. And after, you know, me being me, I, I tend to go a little overboard. But I also will take a kind of cinematic, rather Hollywood approach to it. I'm all about lighting and everything like that. So this is actually the result of what I had done to this photo. Um, this is only about 15 minutes worth of retouching here. Um, Which in everybody else time is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. But I'll yeah. just kind of give you a little breakdown of the layers. So you can see all the layers that are going on here. And I've actually pulled a lot of techniques that I uh, did in my makeup class that we uh, mentioned earlier that's on Kelby One. Um, so one of the first things I did was go in here and did some skin softening. Actually, let me turn some layers off here so we can kind of see where it started, so. We'll just do kind of a layer by layer here. So, so after you know darkening it, did a little bit of a levels of adjustment on this. I went and did this on its own layer. The key thing is layers. Is doing all these various elements, even makeup, which you know women don't have the luxury of doing it on layers in reality. <laughs> um, but well, doing, it depends on their face, Corey. Yeah, hell no. <laughs> but um, putting each element on its own layer allows you to to have a greater degree of control over that. So here I did. Let me zoom in so we can see. So I've got a, a skin smoothing layer here. You can very subtle uh, skin smoothing with a layer mask on it. And then I went and did a little enhanced the contouring a little bit. Then jumped in here and did some highlighting down here in the bottom. A little bit of highlighting under the eyes and such like that. Again, all these are all on their own layer. And I enhanced the, uh, the eyeshadow there a little bit. You can see that's just a very subtle um, enhancement there. And so this is what I started with. Started with the makeup. And the thing about when I'm retouching with makeup is I'm trying to use what's already there. I'm trying to do as little as I can to introduce new um, new elements in there. I want to use what I can in the image uh, as, much as, I, as much as possible. Uh, I enhanced the eyes a little bit there, brought a little glistening to the eyes. I actually kind of used a little bit of something that Christy did on Photoshop TV earlier today. <laughs> cool. Very subtle. Um, but then I went and extracted her from the background, as you can see right here. Then I added, this is a really cool um, trick. I went and added a background with a little bit of an orange light in the background. Now, the thing about making a subject look like they're in that lighting is wrapping the light around them. Now, I have a layer here that's just a gray-filled um, silhouette of that subject with an inner shadow layer style. And what that does is that Ooh. puts that lighting ah. right on the subject. Now That's, that's I'm, genius. I, mean, I, ha yeah, I hate you, Corey. That, that's but, genius. But see the difference there. I know. Isn't that great? That is great. Oh, Look at that. That's the imager. So 
look at the difference yeah. there. I mean, it looks okay Click there. Click it on and off. But now a times. she really blends in that scene, and that is Man. one simple layer with a layer cell on it. And then I went in and added a little bouquet effect in the background. Nice. Very simple brush. And then I did something really cool, and I'm actually going to show you how I did this real quick. Now, the last couple of things I did here. Flare a little bit. So uh, at the at the very at the top. The image looks pretty good. We've got the lighting on the subject and everything like that, but in the, even in the front here, she's not quite picking up that warm light cast that I've got in there. So here's a cool trick. I'm going to hold down the Option key and go to the um, pop-out menu in the Layers panel and choose Merge Visible. That's going to create a flattened version of all of the visible layers at the very top here. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the color. Just Shift-Command-U desaturates that layer. Oh, see, I just learned something. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to soft light. And I'm going to bring that opacity down to around 50%. But here's the cool trick. I'm going to put a color cast on that image, a very warm orange color cast on this. And that's going to affect the temperature of Beautiful. the image. Notice that. And it puts that warm cast around the subject, just Absolutely. like the light you'd expect the light to be generating on her. And then lastly, I added a little bit of a flare in front of her. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's a little bit of atmosphere um, in that area, and that is pretty much what we took, taking this simple JPEG right out of the camera and giving it that glare. Now notice, the integrity of the model is still there. I didn't take anything away from her. We just enhanced it and gave it that really glossy, high-end kind of magazine look to it. What, I uh, wonder how many layers you have ever used. <laughs> yeah, the question is, how, what's the most layers you've ever used? Most layers it, on a retouching job? Or on, on, on a Photoshop job. Oh, man, I've, I've had images that have had well, well into two, 300 layers before. Mm -hmm. Because I try and do everything on its own layer. I mean, even and if it's some, all unnamed, right? Even if it's something, you know, <laughs> and copy layer, one, layer, layer three hundred and twelve. Yeah, no, copy. Uh, we, we joked about this earlier today on. Um, do you do you name your layers? When I'm educating, yes. Yeah, when, when you're it, trying so, to be good. No, when she was on Photoshop TV earlier, she did it. But look here, I've got layer eleven, twelve. You know, it's just like no. Oh, yeah. I get such in the zone when I'm working that. You if know. I stop to name the layers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I'm teaching, I always try and tell people, name yeah. your layers, it's going to save you, especially if you're working with a lot of layers. I I, I'm one of the few. <laughs> I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> but, Who does? But in this case, uh, it's a handful of layers, and I, usually I'll, just, I'll name, especially when I'm doing makeup, I'll name the layer contouring or right. eyeshadow or something like that, just so I can quickly refer to it. But... um. But yeah, I mean, I've, I just get in the zone and I just keep going and everything like that. Well, and the good news for those of you that don't use Photoshop, we're going to do the next one in Lightroom. Christine's going to do the next one in Lightroom. But the question that, that popped up is a very good question. What's the best way to dodge and burn? Gray layer and then dodge and burn tool or using curves and masks? What's your ideas? Um, personally, I use neither of those. so I. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> wrong I, on both counts. I use... Um, I use uh, a 50% gray layer on soft light, and then I use modified highlight and shadow colors from my model's skin, and I modify them in specific ways to make them react better um, with the underlying color of the skin, because a lot of times, if you burn too much in an area, it can get this red mm -hmm. undertone and grossness, and I directly address all of those issues with inside my um, my masters and skin tutorial or whatever it's going to be called. It's definitely something to take a look at. On KelbyOne.com. Mm. How about you, Corey? What was the question? What's the best way to no. dodge and burn? Um, I actually do the grayfield layers um, sometimes. I'll do like a, a soft light or an overlay and I drop the opacity. I mean, again, I like to keep those elements on their own layer, so I'm rarely ever affecting the original pixels. And keep the answer there. is there is no best way. you have gotta get your mindset out of what's the best way. Mm -hmm. It needs to be what's the best way for you What's going to work for you? And it may change. This week it may be I'm really rocking it in this way, and then I find out a different way to do it later that it will change. Uh, you need to adapt it to your style. Sure. But I yeah. think we would all agree, always try to do it on a non-destructive way that you can go back yeah. and change yeah, it. Yeah, if so, yeah, we'll throw it up on another layer. I wouldn't. I, I, I'm never dodge and burn unless I'm being lazy or people aren't watching, uh, dodge and burn directly on the original layer. I'm always yeah. doing it on another layer so I sure. can now have that extra layer of, of flexibility of, of opacity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, um, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's jump into the, another image that we had. And this was from Paul. Oh, I tried to remember his name. Uh, where are you, Paul? Paul. Uh, Paul. Oh, Justin Flugum. 
Flugum. Flugum. Flugum. Sorry, Justin. Justin. But uh, this is the one he sent in. And uh, you were going to show us how to do it over on Lightroom. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is Lightroom, you notice we're always using layers and masks in Photoshop. Most of what Lightroom does does the exact same thing, but the mask and the layering is happening behind the scenes. So you're just using adjustment brushes to do that uh, in Lightroom, but you can do a lot of almost the exact same stuff right here with it, the brushes and stuff. Totally. So go ahead. And he, you know, he mentions Lightroom in his post, and he says, um, you know, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very well versed necessarily in Photoshop. I do most of my work in Lightroom, or at least that's what I kind of, um, you know, got from his comments. So, you know, I use that as I, that prompted me to say, well, let's talk about what else you can do in Lightroom. You know, you when you're retouching portraits, you don't necessarily need to be using Photoshop for that. Um, I've got his image up here in, um, in my Lightroom, and I'm just gonna show you the before and after of what I was able to do in, um, in Lightroom only. Um, I, was, I didn't take this into Photoshop at all, but what you can see is using the exact same concepts of Dodge and Burn, you're able to create quite a nice effect. It's not yeah. overdone or anything like that, but you're able to, you know, Lightroom's getting pretty powerful. It is. Mm -hmm. We say that you can do probably about 90, 95% of all the work you want to do photographically in Lightroom, and then it's the heavy lifting that you bring over into Photoshop, and it's getting stronger every day. And, but uh, so what did you do? Yeah, so I, um, if I come over into my develop module here, um, I, I've actually got a... Uh, portrait retouching adjustment brush uh, pack um, that is going to soon be going out on photopromos.com's deal of the week. It's, a, um, it's like a Groupon for photography related uh, products and, and stuff like that. And so go sign up so that when the brushes come out, they're going to be 85% off. And so you can get them at a real steal. Um, for the for the, what the price is, but what what it is is it's just a set of ninety plus uh, different portrait retouching brushes. Or I'm just going to steal them afterwards. So just write me an email and I'll uh, I'll shoot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work too. Um, but what I did is I just used some of these some of these uh, brushes to to get these effects. And so the the brushes you basically are the settings for all the sliders and how they will affect what you're doing. Exactly. So, you, so if you go choose one like. Uh, Let's talk about skin redness removal. Okay. So if I um, if I click onto this brush here, you can see that we've got we've got the saturation taken down just a little bit, and the only thing in this brush is a slight green color cast on the brush. So what I'm doing is using you're going to know this from being an art major because I completely forgotten the word. Complimentary colors. Compl yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice job. Uh, complimentary colors to neutralize a little right. bit of that mm -hmm. red effect. So if I then come down here, make sure my flow is a little bit lower. And let's, uh, I'm working on a trackpad here, so bear with me. But if I go ahead and just click in this area, you can see how the redness has been neutralized. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's a really, really nice way to selectively, just in one area, get rid of that redness in someone's skin. Yeah, uh, so it's just using, it's, it's learning the software that you're working in and then pushing it to, its, the, to the best of its ability to mm. really let it shine. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people, they're very focused on buying the newest gear. They're very focused on having the newest version of some of mm -hmm. you know software and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why not invest in your knowledge? Yep. Because if you could only invest in your knowledge of that software, it's like you're getting a new product. They're it's just like tools. You're They're just tools. Yeah. You know, what what you use in here is that's that's what you take with you. I mean, absolutely. I mean, all the different versions. Like I said, I came from traditional media, and like a lot of the color principles and color theory, they all apply here. Totally. It's just, it's just different tools. It's just a different media each time, you know? So yeah, you're right. Having the best, fanciest tools doesn't make you an artist, you know? It's what you do with them. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen people take iPhone shots and do things yeah. that, that I've seen. iPhoneography. Yeah. shots, you know? Yeah. Exactly, so. Well, and the good news is, you know, we can only cover so much here. Uh, if you haven't checked out uh, Photoshop User TV, uh, we now got the uh, Lightroom webcast. Uh, we've got uh, PTNT, Photography Tips and Tricks. We're teaching you all this stuff 
It's out there. You can find it. We've got stuff to take you deeper into this stuff. But I'm going to throw a little surprise on you. Why don't we switch seats, and I want to see what you'll do with this picture. Okay. <laughs> That is that sounds, all right? You up yep, for that? That sounds good. What do you think? Well, No, that's great. I was going to say, while we're doing that, I'm going to talk about some new classes that just came up on Kelby One while you guys. Okay, while we're going to switch seats. Right. Corey, right. you... So, let's talk about some things over at Kelby One. Now, we all know about the new Trailblazers um, interview series that Mia McCormick has been doing. Now, she's got this new one, Powerful Women in Photography, um, with Elsa Garrison, um, with Mia and Elsa. And Elsa has carved out a career capturing breathtaking moments at the peak of sports action for nearly 20 years. Shooting for Getty Images, Elsa's photogra uh, photographs sorry, have appeared in e every major sports publication, and she's covered everything from the NFL to the Olympics. So you make sure you want to check that out. That um, Women in Photography series, Trailblazers, is a fantastic series. There's a number of different ones, and our own Mia McCormick is doing those, those interviews as well. Now, another class that's up. I want to steal this. Are you going to talk about Cliff's class? Well, no, I was going to talk about mine. Oh, no, well, then, yeah, you talk about yours because I don't like yours very much. <laughs> yeah, I just got, of course, I have to plug my 3D. I have a new class on Kelby One. It's Next Level 3D. Um, I'm just going to... Oh, I'll just read it like it is. Join Master Corey Bark now. Oh, let me no. read it then. Yeah, let me please read go it. ahead. <laughs> Join Photoshop board. Master Corey Barker and learn how to take your 3D skills to the next level. In this class, Corey takes you through all of the steps involved in three different projects that showcase some of what you can do in 3D. Starting with the logo project that was originally done two-dimensionally. That's crazy talk. Corey mm. shows you how it can be done in 3D. As well as, as well as what the benefits are of having the logo as a 3D object. Just love how you do it. The, the movie voiceover <laughs> guy. That's great. In a world. In a world where. No, but it's a. I, I really. I, I kind of visit. I kind of take a different approach with 3D on on how you can you know incorporate it into photographs as well as design work as well like that. So, the next class. Now this is the one. Um, Cliff Mountner is just a phenomenal. We love Cliff. Cliff is a hustler as far as he's shooting more weddings than everybody else mm -hmm. combined. Uh, the guy is the man, and uh, he's done some wonderful classes for us, uh, and and we've loved them all. Well, when he got through shooting this class, he walked in, and I said, Cliff, how'd it go? He said, I think this is the best class I've done. Mm, yep, I and he goes through, it's an unscripted scripted wedding uh, that he goes through from beginning to end, tells you the whole thing, lets you follow him through the whole thing, uh, and he shows you how he approaches the wedding shoot and, and what the priorities are and all that stuff and how to handle the chaos of the wedding. It's definitely one of the best classes uh, that he's ever done, he says, and, and we love it. So make sure you check that out. And as an added note to Cliff Mountainer, he just recently won at WPPI. It's right. I've got Scott Kelby's blog site up here. He won. The WPPI Grand Award for Photojournalism for the second year in a row. So congratulations, Cliff. So he's got a few skills. We'll so give him uh, a few skills. So but, he's, he's all right. By the he's way, he's good. a crappy golf player. Yes, Cliff, <laughs> I'm talking to you. Horrible. You should see his backswing. It's miserable. I'm going to get a phone call, by the way. <laughs> he is a phenomenal golfer. Any minute now, yeah. So. Okay, and then finally, um, we can't forget tomorrow night, 7 p.m., we're doing the Photoshop 25th anniversary. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's going to be, we're going to be sharing 25 of the top new things. That yeah, it's going to be Pete, myself, RC, Scott. We're all going to be um, talking about our favorite features in Photoshop. What has been, uh, of the past year, what's been added to Photoshop is some phenomenal features in there. We're going to be taking a look at showing you some of the really cool techniques we got. There's a site right there. You can go and sign up. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Again, that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m., March 19th. So hope you see you there. Yeah, please join us. We're giving away some, some neat stuff. We're giving away six Creative Cloud bundles uh, with that. So you need to sign up. You need to join us over there. We're going to give away some great stuff over there. So make sure you don't miss it. Uh, it's going to be celebrating Photoshop's 25th anniversary. And finally, we have a Peach Pit peach bit e-deal we're doing all this so she's working over here she's working on did did they see whose face she's working on did you show them whose face no don't show it yet okay don't show it yet yeah. uh but she's working on that while we're doing this uh and she's <laughs> look at that face she's like oh crap <laughs> uh but anyway okay don't forget about the peach pit e-deal that we have going on <laughs> and it's with our buddy russell is on the cover but this is a, a peach pit e-deal that uh is uh if you go over to peachpit.com slash 
Kelby one, one. Mm-hmm. and it is the ebook that is called I the wish last I could, the last layer. Thank right. you. It finally popped up yeah. so I can read it. You notice I was vamping to get yeah. that out there. It's it's by Bonnie Pierce Lotka, and uh, it's got some amazing stuff in there showing you how to use mixed media, all kinds of different stuff. It's a very yeah. creative book. Yes, it is. Uh, wonderful book. But you can get forty percent off that if you use the coupon code Kelby one. Okay. How you doing over there? You ready? Or should we cover as our giveaways real quick? No, no, no. We're good. I am just now painting in. I just did uh, my frequency separation. Okay. Uh, while she talks about that. I, uh, I just finished the frequency separation um, that I was doing on this image. Remember, if you're not sure what frequency separation is, I give a, a, a quick blurb about it. I, get, I go through a whole tutorial on Photoshop User TV, episode 386. But it's basically you take the image, you create two different images. One, you kind of blur out and you're getting the skin tones, and the other one you're using for details. And that way you're not getting that, that mixture of stuff. Quit mocking me while I'm describing I just this. like the way you're doing this dun, whole dun, thing. Dun, this dun, this dun. is just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you, are, you guys want to see the before and after? Right. Show me. So now, Dazzle here's the thing. We are speaking of Peter Hurley earlier. This is what we have. Oh, you should have started. There's the before. Man, that is a good looking wow. man right there. Look at that. Woo-hoo. And so the nice thing about frequency separation, like you were talking about before, is that if you want, if either of your um, images are, or I'm sorry, if either of your effects are a little bit too strong, you can easily come up to your opacity slider and then just pull down the effect that you think is too strong, like 100% here. Yes, I've you, got the Maddie Hayes ooh, from Moonlighting you effect. Ha- you have a, uh, a young um, no, that, beauty queen. That's a, that's a normal Facebook, queen. yes. That's a normal mm. Facebook look there. That's yes. a very nice baby beauty queen look. Um, but if I want something a little bit more realistic, I can definitely take that. <laughs> the blur that's that's that noise. overly done plastic look everybody yes. talks about. Yeah, exactly. Hashtag uh-huh. PS disasters. Mm. But what's nice is that they're editable on their own layers separately so that you can find that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so Peter... Uh, Filmed that, but uh, took that picture. But uh, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty secure in who I am. What else would you do besides smoothing the skin? Because that's an obvious thing. But uh, what erase are we... it and start over. No. <laughs> um, how about adding a little bit of like eye dimension? Mm-hmm. Like my eyes need to bulge out. No. Why don't we just add a little bit of contrast um, inside wow. <laughs> inside your irises? How about that? Nice. How would you do that? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to use my brush tool. And then I will use, let's see, somewhere around 50% gray. That works for me. Now, why do you use 50% gray? Um, It just reacts a little bit better with the um, blend mode that I'm going to use in order to isolate some some of the striations in your eye. Now I'll come and I'll change the blend mode. Yeah, I'll Can change you? the blend mode to color dodge. Yeah. Color dodge. And it's gonna yes. see. The <laughs> you see, that's the twilight look. I'm yes, seeing the... into your soul now. <laughs> exactly, this is the twilight look and in Next, case anyone is interested. X-Men. Um, if I double click the right side of this layer, um, the layer right here, I'll bring up my layer style dialog box. And then what I want to do is just have this effect ap- uh, apply to only the uh, lighter colors of your iris. So I'll pull this um, this clipping arrow. I don't even know the real name of it. But you see how it basically is kind of saying, all right, Photoshop, I don't want this to apply to um, the darker tones in the image. I want it to only apply to the lighter tones. So then if you are like, yeah, oh, this looks great, but you know, how do I like blur this? Cause I don't, you know, it's pixelated. And I decreased the size of this file because I needed to blur it in a short period of time. Right. So that's why you're seeing some of the pixelation. If you hold down the option key and then click on that arrow, you can split it and create some, uh, some feathering quote unquote to your mask. It gives you a little more control and a little bit, uh, it, it's not quite as, Ins- as clunky. Instead of painting in every single one of those striations in your eyes, what you're able to do is, uh, let's take down the opacity. No, I like it just like that. <laughs> but you can see how we're easily creating some dimension Hello. in your eyes <laughs> and, and making them just so dreamy. And yes. you know, and everybody just wants to look into your eyes for hours. <laughs> yeah. Next time, try the blue steel look from, mm. from Zoolander. Uh, yes, so. I agree. <laughs> 
That's great. That's awesome. So that's cool. Yeah. I, I never even thought about using, you know, that's the wonderful thing is when you get people that have like things, you think everybody knows the same thing everything else knows. I see that. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, he's telling us to shut up. Uh, but, but we it, learn so much. You're just mm -hmm. sitting around and you go, I never would have thought of that. I never thought that's a great well, idea. We were just talking about that earlier. I picked something up from her. She got something, you know, a little, you know, it's just, even if it's just a little thing, you're like, oh, you know, I never thought of doing it that way. That you makes know, right? perfect sense. Makes I, perfect. I, one, as soon as she started pulling it up and then she went, I said, she's going to blend if, and that mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, uh, well, another little thing that I do, um, here's a little, a little side note for you because I got to throw in a little bit of my Photoshop thing there. Hey, pull up a, uh, oh, I can do this because I got the control right here. <laughs> All right, one of the things that I like to do is add specular highlights. And so what I will do is I've actually created some, some brushes. So let's go with, uh, I'm just going to do a, uh, there you go. Yeah, I saw that brush come yeah, up look and at I was this. like, what is this. that? ka -ching. <laughs> And now all I got to do is take that and, uh, oh, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting the keyboard over here. <laughs> <laughs> but then you need to just drink, bring that down. Yeah, and you can sit here and you can start to add your little, I'd have to get it really small uh, in here. You want to take control, but you can create wonderful little uh, specular highlights yeah, and bring those in and you can transform. Boy, I wiped that out a little bit. So you make it smaller. That's very simple to do if you understand how to do brushes. Sometimes uh, you get an eyeball that just doesn't have that quite that pop you want. Mm -hmm, uh, putting mm -hmm. in a nice little specular highlight, I've got Octobank. Uh, different shapes and all kinds of stuff that you can do to match up whatever the the, photog the photograph is. And then usually I just give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur and uh, drop the opacity just a little bit and it gives it that extra little punch. But that's my little Photoshop tip for today. All right, well, we, need to, we need to wrap it up and we got we've giveaways. got some giveaways. Got some giveaways. First we have <gasps> DVD by one and only. Christy, why don't you tell us what this one is? This is a start to finish fashion retouching DVD. So this can be your Bible for all of the skin retouching that you want to learn. Very nice. All right. So from start to finish, it's going to walk through the whole thing. Uh, that's your DVD. We're going to give one of those away. Uh, the next is Corey Barker's Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers uh -huh. Volume D. Love it. It's the second one. Uh, this one is not just for designers, even though it says it is. If mm. you're a photographer, you're going to learn some wonderful tricks in here. It's a phenomenal book. Oh, look. Is that it's you? It's a signed copy. It's a signed copy. Wow. Whoever GSR is. But anyway, it's a signed copy. And lastly, of course, we have Professional Portrait Retouching Techniques for Photographers Using Photoshop by our very own Scott Kelly. Oh, there I need that it. book. So right it here. is a cornucopia of retouching and, and Photoshop goodness here. Mm -hmm. So how do you win, Corey? How do you win indeed? You go to something. There it is. <laughs> you go to kelvyone.com slash contest. Go to the menu. Choose the grid. Enter your name, email, send a comment, question, anything you'd like. But just entering your name is enough to win these prizes. So be sure to do that. And we hope you get these prizes. All and right. the DVD. <laughs> well... Chrissy, thank you so much for being here with Ooh. us. I, I, I realized I was leaning back. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. It's just, uh, there's so much to cover, but uh, we just wanted to get you all kind of in the mood for thinking about retouching in a different way, that retouching is awesome. Just use it with caution, and subtle is better. No glowing eyes, no, no porcelain skin, plastic well, that, sin. And I think this skin. was great, you know, because we, we, we could talk about it all day and, you know, because we work, we work in the same building all day, but to get an outside perspective on this, I thought was very, very cool. So yeah. we, we had some interesting, uh, interesting discussions here. Make sure, awesome. you, make sure you check her out at sharkpixel.com. Yep. Check out what she's doing over there. See the rest of her work. Uh, we're going to be having her do, we've got a class in the hopper. She's already filmed that you're going to find out more about her stuff. Check her out. You can, Corey, where can they find out more about you? Me, I am at CoreySBarker.com. And you can, of course, find me at Facebook. I'm Facebook.com slash CoreyPS3D. So check it out there. And you can find me at PeteCollins.com. You can check me out, PT Photo on Facebook. Or you can also, I run a lot of the stuff over on the Kelby member site. So if you are part of Kelby One, you can find me over there. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for our sponsors and everything that's going on here for Kelby One and all the crew here. We thank you so much, and we will see you here next week at the same time. Take Bye -bye. care.